If your body and mind have not adjusted to the time change yet, you are not alone. After clocks jumped ahead an hour early Sunday morning, millions of Americans are still coming to terms with a second day of daylight saving time. The remarkable story of daylight saving time and our attempt to regulate sunlight hours is documented in this book, Seize the Daylight, the curious and contentious story of daylight saving time by Dr. David Prerau. Dr. Prerau is the world's leading authority on daylight saving time. He joins me now with more. Sir, it's great to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, Happy to be here. The daylight saving time, DST, has quite the history in our country. Why do we have it? Well, we have it uh, for many reasons. Uh, right now, if we talk about one of the benefits now, when you have it in the spring, summer, and fall, it uh, gives people an extra hour after work or after school to stay out, which is good for your um, quality of life, but it also is good for health, that, that people are out exercising rather than inside watching TV. Um, it also reduces traffic accidents, it cuts crime, it uh, reduces energy usage, so it has a lot of benefits in the spring, summer, and fall, not so much in the winter. Okay, yeah, so uh, first of all, you just said something about it, it decreases, you see a decrease in traffic accidents. I want to follow up with you on that in a moment, but let me just okay. put this out there first. A recent poll by YouGov shows disapproval of daylight saving time where, where efforts, uh, so you see 62% would like to see changing the clocks eliminated 21 percent no i would not 17 percent not sure so the vast majority wants to do away with it there are some efforts in congress right now um where does that stand here currently but then also historically we tried this in the 1970s and americans they just hated it what happened there well, in 1974, there was an energy crisis, and the government extended daylight saving time to be year-round in order to try to save energy in the winter. However, what happened was everybody thought they would like it until it actually occurred. When it occurred, nobody liked it, because what happens is it pushes back the, the sunrise in many cases to very late in, late in the morning. Uh, in many major cities, the sunrise would be 8.30 or 9 a.m., or even later, some places 9.30. So when the sun is rising at 9 a.m., everybody's getting up in the dark, going to work in the dark, and one thing that people really cared about was sending their kids to school in the dark. And so this proposal in, that we put in in 1974 became very unpopular very quickly. And even though it was scheduled to be just a two-year temporary fix to try to save energy for, uh, for this uh, energy crisis that we had at that time, it was so unpopular that Congress repealed it after one year. Hmm. So where does where do efforts stand now? Because it sounds like we have a lot of people who gripe about it, but then if it really went into effect, they wouldn't like it. I mean, I don't, I can't imagine having the sun rise at 9:30 or 9 a.m. Right. Well, that, the thing is, when people ask, when people think about the day, they like same time. They think about losing that hour of sleep, and nobody likes to do that. But you have to think what you gain by that. You gain 240 days of daylight saving time in the spring, summer, and fall when you have an extra hour of daylight in the late afternoon or late e or e early evening to be outdoors on a nice uh, summer day. And yet, you have 120 days of standard time in the winter, so you don't have the very late sunrises that you would have if you had daylight saving time in the winter. So, to me, that's that one hour of, of, of loss of sleep, though un unpleasant, you have to think of all the all you're gaining for the whole rest of the year. Okay, and then you know, I mean, just do you have 20 seconds on how to not be groggy each time we yeah. spring forward? Yes. Well, going to losing an hour is no different than going from uh, from L.A. to Denver or Chicago to New York or London to Paris. You lose an hour when you travel, and what travelers do is they prepare in advance for a, when they're going to lose an hour on on a, on a trip by. Uh, by trying to not stay up too late the day before they leave and maybe not making too many plans the next morning. And I think if people did that, if they just it knew it was coming and planned a little bit in advance, uh, they'd be able to, uh, to handle it a lot better. Dr. David, uh, I, I enjoyed our conversation. I wish we had more time. His book is called Seize the Daylight. Uh, the website is seizethedaylight.com uh, or wherever you buy your books, you can find it. I learned a lot. Dr. David, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Happy to be with you. Okay.